We're going to look at the Enlightenment period. And the title of this presentation would be the Enlightenment period, the age or an age of reason and enlightenment. Now, what is the Enlightenment? Well, to understand what the Enlightenment was or the period of the Enlightenment, you have to ask understand the historical background and so the enlightenment period of course was a period of time spanning from the 17th into the 18th centuries it emerged in europe as a cultural and intellectual movement and this movement was characterized by a departure from religious dogma and a focus on reason science and individualism um, some have pointed out that it is a response to uh, the reformation what took place in the in europe in the 15th and 16th centuries well, you move into the 17th and 18th centuries and you have now where you had a religious movement in the Reformation uh, coming out of the Catholic Church, moving into what would become Protestantism. Uh, now you have a response to that and the response to that is to move away from religion or in this case religious dogma teachings and begin to focus much more on uh, human thoughts reason science individualism and so the enlightenment followed a period of religious wars uh, such as the 30 years war which left europe in a state of turmoil and fueled a desire for intellectual and social progress so it's a response uh, what you'll see if you study history uh, often movements happen in response to something else that has taken place previously and usually it's the pendulum swing from one to the other uh, and so it's a rebuttal from what took place previous and it's a turn in the other direction the enlightenment period was much like that now there are key players in the enlightenment period people who had a great deal of influence and these intellectual thinkers were at the forefront of this our enlightenment thinkers with the forefront of this intellectual revolution and these thinkers they emphasize reason and empirical observation as a foundation for knowledge and these prominent figures included people like john locke who championed the idea of natural rights and social contracts um, john locke and his teachings really had a great deal of effect on uh, early Americans and so property rights things of that nature um, John Locke and what he wrote at that time had a great deal of influence on uh, early American leaders Voltaire uh, a Frenchman he was known uh, for his advocacy of the freedom of speech and uh, religious tolerance uh, and of course then Jean-Jacques Rousseau uh, who explored the concept of a general will and the importance of education and in shaping individuals and society uh, this these are these key figures that when you go back and study the enlightenment uh, you'll see their names come up very often uh, the ideas on liberty our governance liberty and human nature 
have a profound impact on political philosophy and the shaping of modern democracies. And they really were the basis of revolution, uh, whether it be the American Revolution, uh, particularly with someone like John Locke, or the French Revolution uh, with Voltaire. And there's a great deal, there's a great study, if you really like history, the differences between the French Revolution and the American Revolution and how and that how they took place. Uh, we may revisit that again. But what about, yes, key thinkers, but what about philosophical ideas? Uh, at the heart of the Enlightenment were philosophical ideas that stressed the importance of reason, logic, and empirical evidence. And so the emphasis, rather than being on religion and authority and knowledge from another place outside of the individual, uh, this is much more individualistic and the emphasis there is using one's mind uh, reason and using one's mind in logic and observing uh, so it's very inward instead of outward enlightenment thinkers believed in the innate capacity of humans to reason and make informed decisions so it was very much the press of humanistic ideas, the press of individualism. And if you look at the foundation, particularly of America, uh, you see that. You see um, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You see all these things are pursuit of, you know, Locke would say life, liberty, and pursuit of property. Uh, um, so you have this emphasis on humans and this is very much uh, the humanities right uh, and then they oppose the notion of an absolute monarchy and a divine right so if you study history you've learned about the divine right of kings and that kings uh, were all powerful and an absolute monarchy a king can make a decision and they have a divine right given to them by god and whatever decision they make it is as if it came from god himself and so these enlightenment thinkers and this philosophical ideas that are coming out of the enlightenment they are arguing against that they are arguing for a more inclusive and accountable form of governance uh, based on the consent of the governed. And so, democracies. Uh, America, America is not a democracy. If you study political science, you'll, you'll understand this. America is not a pure democracy. It is, it is a republic. Um, somewhere along the way, we got away from that verbiage. I think we got away from that verbiage because of um, the use of terms like Democratic Republic of the Congo, which was not Democratic or Republic. <laughs> um, and so you had at, at one point countries in particularly Africa using that moniker, which were not that. Um, that may be some of it, but this is where these enlightenment ideas these philosophical ideas coming out of the enlightenment influenced our american experience if you're in america or if you were in france uh, th that democracy that was birthed out of their re re revolution and democracy that really spread all over the globe uh, or a different way of governance other than absolute monarchy and the divine right of kings so these are the philosophical ideas well to what comes out of this or what is birthed in in this 
it's that the Enlightenment was significantly influenced by the scientific revolution in the 16th and 17th centuries. Uh, you have this kind of twofold um, influence. You have the push against what is going on with religious wars and the Reformation in response to that. Then you have a influence of scientific revolution taking place a century earlier. And of course, these scientific giants like Galileo, uh, New Newton, and Kepler uh, revolutionized our understanding of the natural world. So you have the influence of scientific revolution too with the scientific method. This is the understanding of empirical data and being able to ask questions. You know, many of you learned, probably all of you learned the scientific method in high school uh, about observing and, you know, doing all that comes along with that. Now, scientific method, I think, went from seven steps to five. Um, from when I learned it, it was seven and it later became five. Um, but the idea was there. You're uh, characterizing this by observing experiment, empirical testing, and then you have a model uh, for the pursuit of knowledge in various fields. So this scientific method, not just applied to science, but applied to multiple disciplines, including societies. Then you also have within the Enlightenment a political Enlightenment. And these Enlightenment ideas were instrumental in sh shaping political thought and in institutions, such concepts as democracies, individual rights, separation of powers gained prominence. So, you know, in America, we have a separation of powers. You have the executive branch, the legislative branch, the judicial branch. Instead of one king making the decision for all, uh, you have the separation of powers. And the American Revolution and the French Revolution were deeply influenced by Enlightenment ideas, resulting in the establishment of democratic republics and the recognition of fundamental human rights. All men are created equal. Now this, you know, these words penned by Thomas Jefferson. Well, Thomas Jefferson was reading John Locke. He was reading other people. Um, if you ever go to Monticello um, and you see uh, Jefferson's library, and you think, well, you know, I see more libraries at Gas, you know, more books at Gas and State. But you got to understand, at that time, he had a significant library. He was a well-read individual. And, uh, you know, yes, he went to, to William and Mary, but very well, I mean, also uh, an, what we would call an autodidact. He was self-taught. And a lot of his self-teaching came from reading and uh, even spending time, of course, in France during his political career. So uh, these enlightenment ideas get into the minds of our founding fathers and they shape who we are today. What about the literature of the enlightenment? Well, uh, enlightenment ideas found expression in literature and satire. Uh, you have writers like Voltaire, which use satire to criticize the excesses of the aristocracy and the church. While Voltaire, um, Voltaire, he, he advocates for tolerance but at the same time, he is not pro-church. We'll say that. He's not pro-religion. Um, and then you have Jean-Jacques Rousseau's work, which explored 
the importance of education in nurturing uh, virtuous citizens. Uh, so uh, you have them writing. And, and literature and writing and people being able to be literate really changes uh, cultures and societies uh, fundamentally. I mean, how these ideas get out so quickly. And of course, the printing press is, has been developed at this time by Gutenberg and, and they're able to print books, and, and by this time in the 17th and the 18th century, it'd been around uh, 300 to about 300 years at this point. Uh, so, two to 300 years. So, it's very easy to print these materials, write, print these materials, and get them in the hands of other people for influence. So literature was a huge part of the Enlightenment. Of course, the Enlightenment also influences the world of art. And so the Enlightenment also leaves its mark on art with the emergence of neoclassical art and architecture. And so if you are a fan of architecture, you'll know that the neoclassical style comes about at this point. And the neoclassical artists... Uh, they drew inspiration from a classical antiquity. Uh, they uh, emphasized order, symmetry, um, and ra uh, rational design. A lot of our concepts of beauty probably really stem from this period as well. A lot of the artistry, and particularly symmetry, really stem from this Enlightenment period. Uh, the Enlightenment's references or reverence for reason and nature influenced also painting, sculpture, and architectural styles of the period. Uh, when you go back and look at that period of time, you, know, you get a lot of those frescoes uh, and the emphasis of uh, the voluptuous and <laughs> uh, a lot of paintings that are uh, really artistry of landscape and different things of that nature. You could you could tell when you see them what period they come from. So, what is the legacy of the Enlightenment? Well, the Enlightenment's legacy is evident in modern society uh, as it laid an intellectual foundation for contemporary democracies and human rights. Um, it profoundly influenced the fields of science, philosophy, and culture, shaping the modern world in which we live. And so there's a great deal of influence from the Enlightenment still there. Uh, particularly, I, w I would think of those key thinkers that we we spoke of earlier. Um, Locke, his work still very relevant to some, had a huge influence in the time. Um, so you could see the evidence of the work of someone like Locke. Uh, Voltaire, uh, I don't think Voltaire's uh, emphasis on satire uh, probably um, probably today if Voltaire was around he would say something wrong and he would get cancelled <laughs> but um, Rousseau Rousseau's work probably stands um, the highest because Rousseau was a romantic probably not a romantic the way you would categorize romanticism, but he was a romantic writer, not that he wrote, you know, Harley, Harley Quinn novels or anything like that. Um, but 
his ideas uh, were, uh, he was one of the early romantic writers. And some say that his influence lives on far greater than the other three. So there's still legacies that we see all over in the fields of science, philosophy, culture. Uh, our modern world definitely was shaped by the Enlightenment. So what are some closing thoughts on the Enlightenment? Okay, it was a period of transformative, uh, it was a transformative era which championed basically three things, reason, liberty, and progress. Its impact on politics, science, and the arts continue to resonate today, shaping our understanding of the world and our commitment to fundamental views. Uh, so the Enlightenment period is a very influential period that we must understand better. And, and of course, this is a humanities class, Humanities 101. So I'm giving you just a quick overview and not a whole lot of depth on the Enlightenment period. You, you're going to find a great deal of depth and if you want to take a class uh, that's going to give you a great deal of depth on the Enlightenment period, it's going to be a, a class like Western Civilization, which is a history class. Um, something, too, I wanted to say, uh, I do these lectures and I speak about these topics. Um, and when I do that, it's not always going to sound exactly like uh, what you might read in our open source material or a book um, because I want I want you to get multiple views and multiple understandings of this given topic uh, if, if I just repeat what is in the book well I, I've done no work on my own so I want you to be uh, familiar with it through my presentations and what you will read as well. Um, I hope this is helpful. I have some discussion questions that uh, you might consider. Um, things like uh, what is the specific contributions did Enlightenment thinkers make the fields of philosophy and political theory. You know, philosophy, Voltaire, you know, that look at him, political theory, very much John Locke, um, individual rights, these things. Uh, how did the Enlightenment's emphasis on reason and individualism challenge traditional authority and in institutions? Well, if the traditional authority and in institutions were the church and uh, absolute monarchies, and the divine right of kings, well, individualism is going to challenge those things. Uh, in what ways did Enlightenment ideas influence the American and French revolutions? And what were the outcomes of these revolutions? That would be a good question to understand. I'm not going to go in great depth of detail about it, but there were significant differences between how the American Revolution went through and how the French Revolution ended up. French Revolution, we think about the American Revolution um, as uh, a battle. Well, it was, but the French Revolution was a bloodier battle. The French Revolution was more like a civil war than was actually a war against two, uh, two nations. So that's, that's an interesting uh, comparison. And then can you identify examples of Enlightenment principles in modern society? Uh, how do they continue to shape our world today? Right, thanks again for listening and uh, hope you have a wonderful day.